Hey, everybody. So today I'm going to talk about this concept that's come up a few times in my channel and in my work, which is uh, this rhythmic idea of nested tuplets. Um, I'm not very knowledgeable about music theory or uh, of any sort. Um, I kind of come to rhythm through initially DJing and then drum machines and then Max. Um, but I became aware of this concept of the nested tuplet actually from Sam and uh, and Alex at Cycling74, who have this device called NestUp, uh, which you can see here, uh, where they explore this concept of uh, nested tuplet. Uh, and basically, the idea is that uh, instead of thinking of a rhythm as being rooted in this grid and then having certain slots within that grid to be on or off, like imagine on a drum machine. Uh, like a normal step sequencer. The idea is instead that you're going to basically take some unit of time, let's say a bar, and divide that into segments, and then divide those segments into more segments. So it's this idea of like a sort of containerized sense of time. Uh, and they have this um, really cool like scripting language that if you go read their website, I'll put the link down below, uh, this syntax here describes this kind of containerized type of rhythm. Um, so as I was working on projects in the Max world, one thing that was interesting to me is this idea of kind of how can you take this concept and just uh, repackage it so that you're working with it in a little bit of a different way. Uh, and so for me, the first way that I did this was kind of working with signals timing signals in Max and building these sort of containerized rhythms using timing signals in Max. And then when I started working on the middle MIDI tools for live, it was pretty obvious to me that I also needed to make uh, MIDI tool devices that would be able to do the same thing. So sort of the way that I've approached this uh, is with two devices uh, called blocks and, and divs. And I'll show you a little bit how those work in a second. Let me first just play one of these for you. Uh, just a, a simple one that I've made. Um, so if I start the transport here. So the way to think about this, I'm gonna turn these other sounds down, is we have kind of like these quarter note divisions. This one, this one, this one, and this one. And then each of them have been subdivided. So this one into two, this one into five, three, and four. So we're really not respecting any base 16th node or 8th node grid. We're really more kind of breaking this up into, in this case, even chunks of quarter notes and then subdividing those. Um, there is some musicological literature on this stuff. I found this website that was uh, useful. Uh, so he says, uh, this Jonathan Curtis in his rhythm lecture says, you know, we can have five sixteenth notes without any third or met metric context. And then we can say the first two sixth note, sixteenth notes combine to form an eighth note. The third sixteenth note halves to form two thirty second notes. And the final two sixteenth notes become three via a sixteenth note triplet. So we have basically two eighth notes. We have two 30-second notes, and then we have three 16th note triplets. So this is sort of like musical, logical, or sort of traditional way of thinking about these things. I also found this um, this documentation for Steinberg's Dorico Pro software, oops, which is some kind of a very expensive uh, music composition software, I guess, for composers, people who are sort of trained in music, and they use this kind of notation uh, to display it. To be honest with you, this does not make a lot of sense to me uh, at all. <laughs> but if you know, if you're a musician and um, you're familiar with this type of notation, maybe this makes sense to you. Um, but what I think is a lot easier for me is just to think of, you know, kind of MIDI clip style, uh, these divisions, which I could actually use the grid here to do to demonstrate to you. Actually, sorry, it's not quarter notes because we have two bars here, so it's half notes. These grid increments are the kind of the first container and then 
the second one are divisions of that container. And we can basically um, kind of cascade those if we wanted to. So you could have divisions of divisions. This is a simple example with just two tiers. So um, I was just playing around and with just this simple little beat made this kind of like little haunting sort of composition here. And then for good measure, I added a little bit of a phase pattern kind of exponential stuff. And then I used seed to just do some decoration with uh, granulator two. to get a little bit of atmosphere. Anyway, so let me show you this in action. So uh, let's actually start with the two bars here. I'm gonna start with the blocks object and the blocks creates these containers. What, um, and that's actually a terminology that you won't find in in um, any of the kind of music theory, but I borrowed it from uh, Sam and Alex, and I think it's very useful. So I could have however many, I could have eight. And I showed this particular device in a previous video. The height of each of these sliders basically sets the relative length of the notes that we generate down here. So if I, taking this last one, if I increase this, oops, if I increase this, then you'll see that one gets longer and the other ones get shorter to compensate. So we can create these kind of basic containers. If we do four, we could do it like this. How about? And if we want to quantize these to some grid, we can do that. And we just set the grid over here to whatever we want it to be. And we can kind of force it to respect, uh, respect that. Or if you don't want to, and you just want these uh, these sizes to be determined according to these values exactly, then you can do that. Um, and then you can also set the duration. So the duration is basically proportional to that kind of spacing that the sliders generate. So we'll start with something like this. And this particular instrument starts at about C one or so. So let's play it. Okay, so we have like a kick, let's find. I like that sound. Uh, and by the way, I'm using this, um, I, last time in the last video, I used this plugin called Ting from Clevgrand. Now I'm actually playing with their, their new one that they sent me a, a license for. Uh, so thank you to Clevgrand. And I'll definitely do a video um, kind of exploring more of the possibilities of this particular plugin with the mini tools. Because one thing that it does that's really cool is you can like round robin. Um, I, I don't even know how to do it yet, but I'm excited to like try to figure that out. Because yeah, I think this is a cool instrument. It seems like a very powerful kind of drum rack type of thing. And I'm excited to play with it. So future video on that. But for now, I'm just using a a preset kit in there. So now we have this basic rhythm. And then from there, if we go to divs, we can uh, subdivide these notes. So if I start with just one slider, what's going on here? Hold on. There we go. Um, then I will subdivide them all by this amount. So they're all getting subdivided into two, three, three, four, five. And of course I can quantize those two. can already kind of get this feel of like a rhythm that is based on this sort of containerization where the, the kind of speed of the grid is changing 
within each of these different containers. It's not a rhythm that's easy to create with like your pointer and mouse on the on the piano roll here. If I add another slider, then what it's going to do is basically sort of round robin through. So if I have these all set to, to one, then obviously we won't do any subdivision. But if I set this one to say three, then every other will be divided into three. So this, this one and this one have been subdivided. And then I can modify the, the pitch, quote unquote, which in this case will be the sample over that range. Although I don't want to select. You have to, you have to be careful when you're selecting when using these MIDI tools. So the way that it works is with, with these number of sliders, it kind of is round robining through the um, through the containers. And one thing that I actually sometimes like to do is uh, start with the container and then actually like duplicate it or even triplicate it. And then use a number of div sliders that is not equal. And then we'll add a little bit of a velocity decay. And what's cool about this, the reason I sort of did that the duplication two times was that when we use uh, three sliders, we have this in the divs, we have this uh, desynchronization between the number of containers and the number of division options. So that allows us to have an interesting rhythm that plays itself out over multiple, uh, multiple mini bars, basically. there, we could um, divide some more. And there's a few ways to do this. You could just like select a region and apply whatever transformation you want. That's one way to do it. So just selecting a region and then sort of selecting the applying subdivisions. You can also use this uh, device called Segment that I made, oops, uh, which is pretty useful because it basically allows you to choose which notes you're going to transform based on their length. So let's say I only want to take these long ones, these ones. Or ones that are kind of longer, and we'll do three. And we'll do a rising velocity. So this is like, I mean, to my ears already has like pre a pretty nice feel to it. And certainly like the music that you make with this is gonna be very reliant rhythmically upon this, this MIDI clip. Like it was fun to kind of mess around with these bouncing ball, rallentando kind of rhythms on top of that because they're so desynchronized that like they don't have a rhythmic character to them. also helps you, you like send them to a reverb and kind of put them into an atmospheric place within the mix. One th 
final thing that I might try doing here. Let's actually clone this so that we can keep this. It is uh, using feel. By the way, I should have mentioned this way at the beginning of the video, but these devices, I made them. You can buy them. Uh, the link is down below. If you are new here. So I could use advanced mode and feel and maybe get a little bit of a humanization by just by just shifting slightly things off the grid. So we can get a little bit of kind of wonkiness here. that let's try another variation where we use the shift device to explore some new variations on this Thing that I'll very often do with these is like, you know, start with whatever that initial set of containers is. And maybe it's the duplicated version. And like save that as its own clip. Because one thing that like I find, so as you can see in this video and the other one, I think that the power of these MIDI tools is really unlocked when you use them in series. So you generate something and then modify that with another one and then modify that. And and a lot of what you want to do is kind of save as or, or, or duplicate option, option drag or command D or whatever it is to create new clips and then modify those new clips so that you kind of have this uh, ongoing history of the transformations that you've made and you can always go back and retransform something and then you can kind of use all of those different variations within the music that you end up making. One thing that would be, in my opinion, amazing as a feature for Ableton develop in the future basically is like uh, transformation chains. So in the same sense that we have like, you know, the audio chain or a MIDI chain that takes real-time audio or real-time flowing MIDI, we actually have a chain of devices whose purpose is to like process a batch of MIDI notes within a clip. And so this type of workflow where like I generate the containers, maybe I perform some duplications, I change this length of this um, loop marker, I come over to divs and I do some subdividing. Like these could all be operations that exist within a chain. And then if I were to go to a prior step in the chain and modify it, like if I were to go change the divisions or change the blocks, then that like change would propagate forward. That would be amazing. Um, we don't have that obviously today. So what, you know, it works pretty nicely instead to simply uh, use command Z a lot, <laughs> like use the undo like all the time. Uh, and then also uh, clone clips whenever you have something that you like. Um, and in the previous video that I did, I showed a little bit of that kind of workflow where I'll make a bunch of clips and then use the follow actions to sort of construct the arrangement from that. Um, yeah, so that's nested tuplets with MIDI tools in live. If you wanted to buy, buy these devices, you can find the link down below. You can also find the link to the Discord server that I've created where uh, we have Ableton Live users, Max users, people talking about these MIDI tools. So uh, join that if you're interested. If you're liking these videos, please uh, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.